chapter 8, a verse in the scripture. In chapter 8, verses 34, it says, And when Jesus had called the people unto himself with his disciples, he said unto them, Whoever will come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever will come after me must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. It says whoever will save their life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake and the gospels shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his one and only soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in the sinful and adulterous generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. This is what the Bible says. Now notice what the Bible says here. It says that Jesus called the people to himself and he called his disciples and said. So this was a public message. This was a message for the church, those who believe, and those who are about to believe, those who are interested. So I'm calling up to those who are interested. And the title of what I'm about to share is that I'm calling Christians, or Christians are being called to a higher standard. Today we have a Jesus in the city concert. People are singing songs and praising God. Wonderful, wonderful. We got Christians standing up on a street corner. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Tomorrow, many Christians are going to go to church. They're going to hear a sermon. They're going to sing a song. They might even give a tithe or an offering. Wonderful, wonderful. Some people are watching about Jesus on the television. And they're listening to their favorite preaching. That's wonderful. But Jesus said something very interesting. He said, whoever comes after me must deny himself and pick up his cross. Whoever comes after me, the Bible says, must pick up their cross and deny themselves. This is the challenge that Jesus is throwing out to everyone who believes and who would believe. Would you deny yourself? Would you pick up your cross and follow me? I love going to Christian concerts. But one thing I don't like about Christian concerts is this. You see people at Christian concerts that you never see throughout the year. It's the same reason why I struggle with Christmas holidays and Easter festivities. You see everybody shopping and gathering together on that one day a year. But you never see them on the rest of the year. And you have to ask yourself, what is it that's wrong in the heart of believers? What is it that's wrong in the heart of Christians? I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said in that verse, he says, Whoever is ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous generation, I will be ashamed of him. I believe very strongly the problem with the church is that people have something that has more worth and value than God. People have something of more worth and value than God. And so they're afraid to talk about Jesus because their job is more worth, worth it in their lives. They have more value to the opinions of men than Jesus. And this is the shame. This is the tragedy. And this is why the world is going down to hell in a handbasket. Because people are ashamed of Jesus. They would rather put their jobs and their friends and their ambitions, their fashions before Jesus. And 
this is what Jesus spoke about. Whoever comes after me. I don't know who you are today. Maybe you're saying I go to church every Sunday and I take Holy Communion. I take the Eucharist. Wonderful. But have you denied yourself? Have you picked up your cross and followed him? It's a hard road to follow him. It's very easy to say, I believe. You know, in the book of James, it says that the devils believe and they tremble. But the devils don't follow Jesus. They don't surrender and obey the gospel. Why? Because they have something of more value than the Lord. I have a question today to ask you. What do you have that's of more value to you than Jesus? What is more precious to you than Jesus? I know some people personally that are afraid to talk about Jesus at their workplace. That are afraid to talk about Jesus on the bus. That are afraid to hang on a track because they don't want to look the fool. They don't want to say that somebody saw me looking like a Christian freak. I'm here to tell you today that I'm proud to be a Christian freak. I'm proud to look the fool for Jesus. But what about you? What about those in the banking profession today? Some of you know that the banking profession is ripping people off. And because of your job, you rip people off along with them. Some of you are media companies. And you know that what they're giving the people is junk. But you're afraid to make a word. You're afraid to say anything about it. Why is this? Because you hold your job of more value than your position with Jesus. You hold your house of more, more value and, and worth than your place in the kingdom of heaven. And God is saying to you today, Christians, wake up. This is not time to sit on the fence. This is not time to compromise. This is not time to be afraid. This is time to make a decision. What will your decision be? What will your decision be? You see, you know, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But I've come to realize over time that believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is not just acknowledging him. It's believing on his words. That's why Jesus said, whoever's ashamed of me and my words, I will be ashamed of him. Maybe you're not ashamed to say, I believe in Jesus, but are you, are you ashamed of his words? Are you ashamed of his values? And that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where many of you go the other way. It's when Christ calls you to a higher life. And he says, I want you to believe and follow me. And I want you to give up the things that you hold dear for me. Would you do it? Would you trust in Jesus? Even if it means losing your own life? This is the requirement for the entry into the kingdom of God. This is the standard. And not many want to go through that. It's too hard. It's too rugged. It's too narrow. And that's why Jesus said, narrow is the road and only few will go therein. Narrow. Are you ready to walk the narrow road for Jesus? Are you ready to pick up your cross for Jesus? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. To those who want to live in the flesh, the commandments of God are grievous. And what are the commandments of the Lord? Well, it's all summed up in this. Love your neighbor as yourself. And love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Those commandments of the Lord are summed up in those two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And love your neighbor as yourself. A thought came to mind when I was reading the word, meditating on the word a few days ago. And this is what it says in the book of Revelations. It's a very scary passage. 
Brother, do you have a Bible? My, my yeah, 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 that part of the Bible kind of, I don't know what happened to it. Somebody was chewing on the Bible. Revelations chapter 20. Says here. Here, chapter 21. It says, but the cowardly, the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I was meditating on this word just two days ago, just yesterday, and I thought about it. I thought about how many people are going to hell. How many people who think that they're going to be with Jesus are actually on their way to hell. The Bible says the cowardly. How many Christians are cowards today? Afraid to stand up for Jesus. Afraid to declare the truth of Jesus. Afraid to say it how it is. There's so many. There's so many. Afraid to lose their jobs for Jesus. Afraid to go to jail for Jesus. Cowards. Do you know that they will have their part in the lake of fire? It says the unbelieving. I believe those are the reformed cessationists. Now, it's not the reform part I have a problem with. It's the cessationists, those who don't believe in the gifts. they unbelieving. Do you know what Jesus said in the Word of God? You know what he said in the Word of God in Mark chapter 6? One, one of the chapters of the book of Mark. He said, O ye of little faith, they brought back the disciples and said, Why was it that the disciples were not able to cast out demons? You see, sometimes people wrestle and they say, ha ha, if you were, if you were really anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you would have been able to cast out that demon a lot quicker than that. But in scripture, at the time of Jesus, some of his disciples were not able to cast out a demon. And so the people brought the disciples back to Jesus and said, why was it that they couldn't cast out the demon? And you know what Jesus said? Oh, you have little faith. It's because of your unbelief. And he was frustrated with them because of their unbelief. Do you know that today, if you claim to be a Christian and don't believe that God can heal, you don't believe that God can deliver, you don't believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible says you're unbelieving. You're not of the faith when you don't believe. In fact, if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't be saved. And if you don't believe that he is who he said he is, you're believing in a false Jesus. It's sad to say a lot of people talk about, you know, false prophets and people that do miracles and stuff like that. But very rarely do they talk about those who don't believe. The unbelieving. If you claim to be a believer today, but you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, you don't believe that he can cast out demons today and heal the sick, I'm here to tell you today, you're not walking with the same Jesus of the Bible. The Bible, the Jesus of the Bible is a Jesus that can heal the sick. He's a Jesus that can raise the dead. He's a Jesus that doesn't send people to the, the, the psychiatric hospital for help. You know what he does? He says, demon, come out. Spirit of infirmity, come out. And the person can be set free. I believe today that if you're here, Jesus can set you free. Because I believe that the Jesus that I serve is living and he's active. He's still alive today. And if, you have, if you're wrestling with demons in your heart, you're wrestling with demons in your mind. 
You need a touch from the Lord. You don't need to run to the doctor down the road. They'll give you medication that won't heal you. You need to run to Jesus. And we're here to pray for you. Some of you need deliverance from your addiction. Some of you need help in your marriage. Some of you need a deliverance from an overwhelming thought. Something going on in your nightmares. Do you know that the power of God can set you free? Do you know that the power of God can raise the dead? Do you know that the power of God can heal the sick? Do you know that Jesus is still alive today? I'm going to read again what the Bible says about those who are going to enter into the lake of fire. The cowardly, the unbelieving. The Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you'll say to the mountain, move. And it shall be moved. But many today don't have faith. Many today don't believe. But I'm calling you to a real God. A God that rose from the dead. A God that can raise you from the dead. The Bible says the abominable. The abominable will have their part in the lake of fire. Do you know that the scripture labels certain things as abominations? Abomination. Jesus foretold that when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. You know what? If you look up the word desolate, I'm just going to pull it up in my dictionary. But you know, desolation is when there's nothing there. Desolation speaks of hopelessness. I'm going to get the actual dictionary definition of desolation. And when I pull up that definition, this is what it says. A state of complete emptiness and destruction. A state of great unhappiness and loneliness. I'm going to read another definition from another dictionary. I mean, these are, this is, this is the meaning of desolation. says here, the deserted, the empty, the depressing place, a person who feels lonely, hopeless, sad, deserted. Another dictionary says this, Miriam's Webster Dictionary defines desolation as devoid of inhabitants and visitors. Joyless, barren, devoid of comfort and hope. I want to tell you something. Jesus said when you see the abomination, so this is somebody that's living in a lifestyle that's abominable to God. When you see this standing in the holy place, this is in pulpits, in the temple, Places that are reserved to be holy. So I'm going to put it this way. When you see certain people that are living certain lifestyles that the Bible says is an abomination. Standing. And have desolate fruit that comes forth from them. And we define desolation as barren. So those who are living in abominational lifestyles are barren, joyless, lifeless. The Bible says... That the wages of sin is death. The soul that sin shall die. And when we are separated from God, we don't have eternal life. So those who are living in abominable lifestyles, standing in the holy place, it brings desolation. There is no hope like that. There is no fruit from that. In fact, no children can come like that. And we know that we're in the last days. So Jesus says in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, that the abominable, those practicing abomination, will have their part of the lake of fire. Murderers, those who hate other people, bigots against Christians, 
Those who persecute Christians will have their part in the lake of fire. The sexually immoral. Those who sleep around before marriage. And the Bible defines marriage as a husband, a male, and a female. Those who are sexually immoral will have their part in the lake of fire, according to the Bible. Very simple. Sleeping around with your girlfriend, boyfriend. Sleeping around outside of the context of a biblical marriage, male and female. The Bible says that that's called sexually immoral. It doesn't matter who you are today. You will have your part in the lake of fire. Sorcerers. Yes, those are people that worship the trees. Those are people that that divulge or, or participate in yoga. Those are people that dabble around in the Ouija board, call themselves witches, white magic, black magic. Dabbling around in Chinese witchcraft, Asian witchcraft, going to the psychic, Looking at the horoscope, just because it's a part of the Sun News, just because it's a part of the Toronto Star, doesn't make it right. Amen. The Bible says, all sorcerers, in fact, they'll carry it a little more. Those who, those who put their own ways in front of God's ways, that's witchcraft as well. They will have their part in the lake of fire. Why will they have their part in the lake of fire? God bless you. God bless you. Because what they're doing is destructive to themselves. And it's destructive to humanity. When you break the laws of God. And you go contrary to what is right. And what is moral. And what is true and what is holy. You will find yourself destroyed by your own means. And also cast into the lake of fire by God himself. Idolaters. Those are talking about the people that set up statues in their home and worship them. Those are people that put their things before God. Money. Women. Everything else before God. They will have their part in the lake of fire. The Bible also says, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. All those who live in lies practice abominations and idolatry. So Jesus is saying, will you deny yourself? Will you pick up your cross and follow me? It's not just saying I believe in Jesus. But will you believe in his words? Caravana is coming up. And we hear a lot of songs today that are apparently gospel. And everybody likes to dance. They dance for Jesus. But they don't like to follow Jesus. Everybody likes to sing for Jesus. But they don't like to follow Jesus. My friends, these are the last days where God is calling the true believer to himself. It's not enough to go to church. It's time to follow Christ. It's not enough to say, I, I accepted Jesus by a prayer. Will you deny yourself and be a living witness, a living martyr for Jesus? You must count the cost. Will you come to him? Well, God bless you, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen. Receive some free information about Jesus today before it's too late. Trust in him. He loves you.